think. Act and prosper. You are now tuned into the Money Level Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Money Level Show, where we think, act, and prosper. And today, I'm going to give you all my thoughts on my interview with Stephen Van Meter. So Stephen was a really great guy. You know, I had a good time laughing with him, joking with him, and we we had a good interview. Now, Stephen is seen as a contrarian because he follows the data that is put out by the Federal Reserve, the data that's put out by the government. Now, I noticed in our community, there's a lot of discrepancies between things like inflation. When we see the price of lumber, we see the price of shipping, we see the price of corn, beef, all these different things increasing in value or increasing in price and the CPI isn't reflecting that in inflation. Now the CPI is based off a lot of different metrics such as electronics and other things. And oil is one of those as well. Now Stephen trusts the data that the government puts out. But I've noticed that a lot of people in the community or the inflation camp does not trust the data that the government puts out because they're seeing the cost of housing, the cost of living, the cost of education, the cost of health care, you know, all these different things. They're seeing these prices rise and their dollar losing value. Now, Stephen has a really interesting perspective that I really like about bonds. Now, I've heard a lot of talk about bonds being in the bubble and that bonds should not be invested in. Stephen's case is that bonds are used for when the deflationary shock happens, bonds will go up as other assets go down, such as gold and stocks. Now, this is an interesting perspective because you're able to sell your bonds at a premium and then be able to buy more of the stocks, the gold and other assets at a cheaper price. So that's something that interested me about bonds and things that I didn't know. Steven also talked about the state of the housing market and the fact that a lot of the money that is going around is getting dried up. It's getting sucked dry and that the liquidity is not going to be there in the future. Therefore, we're going to see the prices of houses come down. We're going to see the stocks go down. Now, some people may agree with that. Some people may not. I mean, if you're in an inflation camp, you're going to see assets continuously rise and we've seen housing prices rise and that's a part of the inflation argument. And also me being a real estate agent, I know that each area is different as far as the housing market. Now, the housing market as a whole has been increasing, but in my particular area, we implemented fast ferries. I live in Washington state, so we have fast ferries to Seattle from three different cities within my county. So these fast ferries are only 30 minutes to downtown Seattle. So a lot of people that lived in Seattle where they were paying $700,000, $800,000 for homes are now buying homes in my county because they are cheaper. This is driving the prices of our housing in, in Kitsap County higher. So that is kind of a fact that is making our housing market here really strong and really expensive because once COVID happened, the protests, you had CHOP, you had Chaz in, in Seattle and people wanted to get out of there and they saw that they could buy homes over here very cheap, get to work within 30 minutes, not have to sit in traffic uh, to get to work and they could just walk downtown off the ferry and get to work. And now this has been a problem because we have had people in our local community that want to buy homes and now they're in competition with people from Seattle who get paid more, have a higher minimum wage, and it's very competitive. So Stephen makes some good points about the housing market crash and time will tell if that's gonna happen. Other than that, I felt Stephen was a good guy. I felt that he was very genuine in his approach. He trusts the data that the government puts out And I believe that is kind of the discrepancy with a lot of people in the inflation camp versus the deflation camp is that people in a deflation camp normally trust the data that comes out by the government. And, or they may say that we see inflation in pockets like Steven mentioned in the, in the video, uh, Steven mentioned that you may have pockets of inflation, which they may say, Oh, food is going to be inflated but these areas over here aren't gonna be inflated. So those are some different things to think about. So I just encourage you all, if you haven't watched that interview, to be sure to go watch that interview. Uh, Let me know in the comments what you think. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. I appreciate you all for tuning in and we're gonna be coming with some more awesome content. I got some more big interviews coming up. So I want you guys to stay tuned and keep supporting the channel. And I appreciate you all and thank you for joining the Money Level Show.